Hey folks, welcome back to Horse Pen Ranch and Horse Pen Ranch YouTube channel. You're in for a treat today. We're making pan de campo, camp bread, or cowboy bread, whatever you want to call it. It's the official state bread of Texas. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Don't go anywhere. Okay guys, here we go. A little bit of history. I found this recipe. I didn't find this recipe. I found the word pan de campo in a cookbook about four years ago and and found very little bit of it on YouTube. Uh, found some recipes, but they're all different. So I, I have tweaked this. Uh, my family can attest. We've tried it and tried it in so many different ways. And I'll talk when I make this, I'll, I'll talk to you about different ways that you can do things. Um, this was a very primitive bread. Think of it as a big old biscuit. Um, it was made by vaqueros, uh, southern Texas and Mexico uh, as a camp bread, a cowboy bread. Uh, so you can make this, we're gonna make it with milk today. You can use, it, you can use water in this, uh, any kind of fat you wanna use in this. There's a lot of different ways to make this. So I'm gonna show you my way today and a way that I, like I said, I've tried uh, several recipes and tweaked it, and this is kind of one I just kind of um, threw some stuff together and decided this is what I like. So here we go, we're gonna get started, okay? Got a bowl here. We're doing two cups of all-purpose flour, and I wanna sift it in there. So I wanna get two cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna get a pretty good amount in here. Make it good, there we go. So two cups of flour in my sifter. And so we're just going to sift it in this bowl here. Okay, so two cups of flour. To that, we're going to add our other dry ingredients. And we're going to use a tablespoon of baking powder, not soda. And I tell you, I, I started out using a teaspoon of this. I like the tablespoon. It rises a little better with a tablespoon. We're going to use a teaspoon of salt. Teaspoon of salt. And that'll be good. And we're gonna use a teaspoon of sugar right there. And that is our dry ingredients right there, guys. That's it. So we're gonna mix this together real good and make sure our baking powder is uh, all in there good and our salt and our sugar with our flour all in there good. Now, the fat is next. So a cowboy could have this in a bag of some sort still to this day. This dry ingredients mixed up ready to rock and roll and add creek water to it water from his canteen to it and of course before he did that he needed to add some kind of fat to it um, so there's a lot of different ways you can go here i'm going to use butter today i'm going to use butter today um, i'm going to use half a stick of butter which is one two three four tablespoons of butter so i'm going to cut this in half or so i've used five tablespoons we're gonna stick with about four today. So half a stick of butter. And I'm gonna take this butter, with my trusty little pocket knife, and I'm just gonna kinda of cut it up in there like so, okay? And it's it's not softened, it's, um, it's a little soft. Not far out of the refrigerator. And we're gonna cut this in with a fork, okay? You can use your hands, you can use a pastry cutter, but we're gonna use a fork. And we're gonna get it cut in real, real good. So I'm using my, my, my index finger and just cutting it in this flour real good. So let me tell you what I've used in my trials of this recipe. I've used bacon grease. And it tastes really good. But it tastes a little like, of course, bacon grease, which is not a bad thing. I've used lard, which is always a good go-to. I've even fudged and even tried Crisco and butter Crisco. Guys, I've made this a hundred times, I feel like. But, I like butter. I like lard probably second, and I like bacon grease probably third. If you look here, I got small bits of crumbs. I'm cut up. I like the fork in this because the pastry cutter doesn't, is not as, um, doesn't cut it as small. 
kind of like it all cut up. So you want to use, you don't want to use soft butter. You want to use butter that's somewhat out of the ice chest out of the refrigerator. I'm using a 12 inch Dutch oven today and it's already on the coals over here. Uh, the bottom of it is 12 inch shallow oven. Okay. And I'm kind of heating it up the bottom of it right now. It's already greased. You already got some oil in the bottom of the uh, Dutch oven. So now, like I said, from here, you can do primitive, you can go water. You know, you can do buttermilk, guys. You can do uh, buttermilk if you want to. I know I've seen, I've seen recipes with, with buttermilk. We're going to start off with milk. And about three quarters of a cup does this right. I got a quarter cup measure I got up here. So I'm going to do three of them. So there's one, two, three. There it is. We're going to start with that. And that's probably going to be it. I've had to add some, a little bit more milk in the past to kind of, um, I don't want to dry out, but using my handy dandy silicone spatula, I love it. It's a great invention, whoever did that. So here we go. So notice right here where I'm at on this. It's pretty, looks pretty good. The consistency is a little wet, but it's going to ball up to a nice, nice little, um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I want to hit it with a little bit more milk in this bottom area. Not much more right here. That's all. And I'm going to flour my hands, guys. And we're going to turn this out. This is not, man, this is a cool um, thing to make because it's literally kind of what you want it to be. There's, there's so many different ways to make this. About like there's so many different ways to make a biscuit. There's a lot of different ways to make pine de campo. State bread of Texas, I think in 2005 is when the governor just declared it the state bread of Texas. I'm an Oklahoma boy. So this is somewhat new to me. I know if you're down in South Texas, you probably been, you grew up eating this stuff. And you're like, man, that's no big deal, Justin. I've been eating that since forever. Okay. I'm going to ball this up real good. To a big old dough ball. And throw it on our little board here. When you go to looking for different recipes, you'll see, you'll notice there's not hardly any of them the same. So it's kind of intimidating. And there's also recipes that make several of these bread dough balls. Like you want to make them for a bunch of people. Kind of a big recipe. All right, here we go. So I like that. I like that. It's a little tacky, but I like it. I, I like it. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm going to work it a little bit over here. So you can kind of see right here. I mean, it's really close. If I have some little flour in my hands, but it's not sticking to my hands. I like that right there. I like that consistency right there. And so I'm just going to kind of work it. Work it around a little bit, squeeze it. Try to stick to me a little bit, get a little more flour here on my board, on my hands. And I'm gonna kinda, I think we're done, that's good. So can you see here? Looks good. So, from this point here, I wanna go ahead and roll it out. I'm going to lid back on my milk before I spill it all over me. i got my little roller here. Flatter my roller a little bit. We're just going to kind of roll this out a little bit. And we want it about, you want to keep it kind of round. All right, that's the key. Keep it round. Don't got to be perfectly round. You're not trying to win a contest. They have Pandy Campo contests, I think, down south, Texas. Never been in one. I probably wouldn't win it. Guys, that's it. That's our bread. It's our camp bread right there. That's it right there. It'll rise at least double that. I'm going to take a fork. It's going to be my top side. And I'm going to put some holes in this. We're going to cook this for about probably a total of 20 minutes in this Dutch oven. I'm going to take the lid off of it first. So we're going to flop the bread in there, guys. This is it right here. Right there. 
that's the before product. Let's dig it in here and we're gonna rotate it around. Okay, there's the Pondi Campo. Little fingerprint in there. Check it out. There you go. Lid on it. We're gonna load some coals on it. We're gonna load the top up here. So we want this to cook about 400 degrees or so for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes on the inside if you're using an oven I'd put it in a cast iron skillet if I was you I'd say I've cooked them on the inside now we're not going to flip ours we're not going to flip ours that's if you watch other videos and if you uh other recipes people flip them let me tell you some secrets it's hard to flip them without tearing them up number one number two we got a dutch oven going on here so we're cooking from the top and bottom so we necessarily got to flip this so we're not going to one of these days i like to do this same recipe on a skillet out here on some coals and flip it and kind of like it would have happened on the cow trail on the cowboy trail because they didn't carry dutch ovens on their saddlebags but they could possibly carry a small skillet and so uh that's a future video okay so we're gonna let this cook about um probably a good seven or eight minutes and then i'm gonna check it i'm gonna rotate the lid and i'm gonna rotate the whole oven because we can make sure that we're distributing heat good y'all stay tuned we're going to take a look at this we're about um about eight minutes at this point so there's our rise. I told you I was going to rise. There it is. Not perfectly round, but hey, that's okay. It's, it's round enough for me. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put this lid back on. How I took it off. We're going to rotate it like so. I'm going to take this and move the hole right there. There it is. Now, no... I do this because we don't know exactly how even that heat is. It looks even, right? But it, we don't know how even that heat is. Probably not very even. Same thing with down here. And so we rotate halfway through to uh, the top and the whole thing on the bottom to make sure our heat is being evenly distributed. Okay. Very important when you're doing some kind of a bread, cake, biscuit, something like that. So the next time I come back here, we'll be be done we're gonna be trying this so don't go anywhere so we had a lot of rain the last week here in Oklahoma and so my wood is pretty wet so I'm using hard lump charcoal I totally recommend hard lump charcoal over briquettes these things are awesome I use these two a lot this Royal Oak made in the US of A and that is cowboy brand made in the US of A and uh, a very good all-natural hard lump hardwood hard lump charcoal you gotta just add some fire to it and some air to it a uh, torch of some sort and it comes right up and you've got instant coals to cook with i even use it sometimes if i'm going to th throw wood on top of it later so good to go when you have a uh, some wet firewood so they don't pay me to advertise for them i'm not there's other good brands out there make sure you have a 100 all natural is what you're looking for so most of them say see that all natural and all natural that's what you're looking for that's just uh Good old-fashioned hardwood lump charcoal. So, little tip for the day. All right, guys. I think we're gonna call that good. It looks good to me. Take a look. It's nice and a little brown tone on top. So we're going to. This kind can be kind of tricky getting it out. We're gonna use this little hamburger round spatula thing. Bring it up like so and just take it right there. All right, okay, here we go. The best part of this video making is this last part. Check it out. Pretty good, pretty good. little f nice bottom, nice bottom. This was a lopsided, not unlevel ground. So this side has a little bit more grease on the bottom, but that looks beautiful. That'll be nice and good. It's still warm. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna cut this right in half. Oh yeah, look at this. Mm. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. 
So we got to add some butter. You know, we only use half stick of this butter. So we got to use some more butter here. And uh, I'll give me a bite of this stuff right here. So guys, try this out. This is uh, good with beans. It's good with chili. It's good with um, um, honey, jelly, you name it. Good for breakfast, good for lunch, and good for dinner. You name it. This stuff is very versatile, and it is awesome. Okay? So I'm going to try this bite right here. Look at that. Nice little rise on it, little crusty bottom. Mmm. The butter, as your fat, just complements it. Um, like I said, lard's fine. You can use whatever you want. Crisco, I guess you could use vegetable oil if you wanted to. But um, that right there, my friend, is some good eats. Mm. I could just continue to eat that and just let the video run. But I'm not. Thank you so much for watching Horsepin Ranch and coming at the wagon and uh, the Dutch ovens and, and, and watching our videos. We really, really appreciate it. Like I said, we're over a thousand subscribers. We're thankful for that. I got a Facebook page. Check us out there. We got a It's Horse Pain Ranch Chuck Wagon, uh, our YouTube channel here. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please do that. And again, we are so thankful that you're watching. And uh, until next time, we'll see you on Horse Pain Ranch.